Hey everyone, it's Jeannie from A1 Vacuum and Sewing and I am getting ready to start Kimber Bell's Sweet Land of Liberty um, and this is one of their pillows. So let's go ahead and talk about how I prep. So this is our fabric kit. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull everything out of here except um, these are the embellishments. I'm not gonna touch those. I'm just gonna use them as I go and um, I'm not even gonna trim them down. I think they're pretty much trimmed down. Uh, these are the fabric scraps. The only thing that's not in my kit is the backing fabric, um, and I chose not to even have any backing fabric in mine because I usually just use scraps and I piece it together and make a scrappy back. Kind of my thing. My iron's on and heating up and I have some best press. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and stabilize all the fabric. So here are the instructions. Um, and I did do a spreadsheet, which I will send to you. But these are gonna be the cutting instructions, um, what goes where and how, uh, we'll organize according to this. And then this is how we're actually going to cut. So before I start cutting though, I like to stabilize everything to make sure everything's nice and crisp and clean. And I'll just start with these. So these are my fabric scraps. And let me go ahead and line these all up. I'm gonna spray them and then I'll press them all. You should have nine of these. And this is probably going to be pretty boring, but if you're doing this with me, if you want, you can do each one. Keep in mind the pieces that are directional and you just want to press until they're dry. And I think we cut these a little bit bigger, like maybe five and a quarter, because I've had kits where it's not big enough, where you're kind of uh, struggling to get it to fit your pieces, like they're two and a half, four two and a half inch pieces, and then your fabric's not quite big enough. I love this iron. When I'm doing a lot of uh, pressing or ironing, I use my Aliso. Because I love that. See how I'm distorting that? I love how I can just take my hand off the handle and then it will just drop down. I mean, it'll stand up. And so I don't have to worry about the stress on my shoulder. Most of the time I use my um, Panasonic 360. And we carry both of these irons in the store. So, if you need one, come and see me. Okay, fabric scraps done. I'm just going to start with my fat sixteenths. I'll just spray them all. And then I'll press them. So start with a full bottle of Best Press. This is going to make it so when you go to sew them all together. Okay, this is directional, so make sure you pay attention to that. Try not to distort the weave. And I can go. It'll this is just stabilizing your fabric. This is doodle, so there is no nothing you really have to be too careful of here.
Okay, so I am going to stabilize every piece of fabric in my kit. I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to sit here and be so bored watching me do this. And then we will go ahead and we will cut our pieces to the dimensions that are in our instructions. All right, I'll see you back here in just a little bit. Now that everything is pressed out, I'm going to go ahead and cut as per the fabric cutting diagrams. I have a rotating mat here, which I really like for cutting my smaller pieces. Um, I have two rotary blades. I love my 60. This is my 60 millimeter, um, and I'll use that most of the time, but sometimes with smaller stuff, I'll use my 45. Um, and then I have another cutting board here for uh, larger pieces. I have a ray and a ray of rulers. So um, you just wanna have, it just makes it easier to use smaller rulers for smaller cuts and the bigger rulers for the bigger cuts. Let's go ahead and get started and I'm gonna start with the smaller cuts first and then move up. That way I can just use my rotating mat. So um, the brown one is just two inches by two inches and um, I love these. I didn't want to love them because I have so many, um, creative grid rulers and I love my creative grid rulers. I don't know what they put on the back of this, but it makes it gummy. So the whole thing kind of, um, the whole thing is just, I don't want to say sticky, but it doesn't move. And I'm going to square this off. I'm going to cut here and here, and then I'll cut the other side. Oh, that's Mr. Momo. And then I'm going to cut here and here. So this is going to be absolutely perfect. Some of these pieces don't make a difference. They don't have to be perfect. And there's my two by two. And I'm just going to put the ones that are trimmed and ready to go to the side. And let's just keep going. So next is going to, and then this will become part of my back. Here's this piece. This is going to be three by three and a half. So this is a three and a half inch ruler. I'm just getting to know these still. So I have my three by three and a half. And um, I guess I can cut it this way and then I can cut all three sides. And I'll have one side left to cut. Yes, that was Mr. Momo. Okay, three by three and a half. Three by two and a half. Three by two and a half. I mean, it's like, it's like it's rubber backed or something. Okay, here's my three by two and a half. And then I need a two and a half by two and a half. Oop, but I cut it over here. Two and a half by two and a half. I do love the way everything is numbered on my creative grades and I'm so used to those at this point so this is gonna take me a little bit of a learning this is five inches by one inch
this is five by one and a half. And then also a three and a half by two. Three and a half. And why don't we go this direction? I'm just going to go the whole. Okay, three and a half by two. This one is three and a half by two. Get some Momo hair thrown in. Cut it this way and square up those other two sides. You can do what you want. Most likely, um, these will they may or may not be used for piecing. If they're piecing, you have to be precise. If it's for applique, it really doesn't matter. You know how generous the uh, Kimberbell pieces are. Three and a half by two. The yellow is three and a half by three. This is a three inch ruler, so three and a half by three. You can square up a couple of sides on this. This is what's so great about a rotating mat. You can get a number of cuts. Uh-oh, I don't remember which side. It's probably this side right here. Three and a half by three. There we go. And... This piece here, two and a half by two and a half. I think my black numbers, I think that's right. Two and a half and two and a half. There's my two and a half by two and a half. And finally, this piece here, which is going to be five inches by one inch. And I'm looking at this going, I think the print um, the word print was supposed to be four and a half by two, and I cut it to five by one. So let me go ahead and fix that. Luckily, you have plenty of that. Okay. I cut this five inches by one inch, but this one is really four and a half by two. So here we go, four and a half by two. Let me just go ahead and cut this side first. I'm just gonna cut the whole thing. We'll just make sure this is four and a half and everything is lined up. And it is. Alrighty, and so I don't get confused, I'm just going to pull this out. And all of the little pieces are cut. I am going to, I find it kind of therapeutic. I will take all of these pieces and cut them up and then piece them back together. And that will be 
my pillow back. I like to just turn on a good show, and there's so many good shows on TV right now. So I'm just going to throw this in the bag so I don't think I need it. Then we'll organize all the other stuff. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and cut these pieces right here. Those are all pressed. Those were my fat 16th. Um, pay attention to if it says it is directional. So this one up here, let's eliminate stuff and make sure. So this is not directional. We're going to cut two pieces out of this, the three by five and the two by three and a half. Three by five. I just love the markings on my Creative Grid rulers. I mean, I'm going to have to get used to the other ones. The other ones, they just don't even move. I just can't even tell you how awesome they are. But these, I still love my Creative Grid rulers. These are so easy to read. Toss that in the pile. Now I need a uh, two by three and a half. Sometimes I use the chart, sometimes I don't. Two by three and a half. Two by three and a half. And that piece is done. Meaning I'm done with that piece. I don't have to cut anything else from it. To the side, this piece here is going to be six and a half by eight and a half. <clears throat> eight and a half. Six and a half by eight and a half. I'm just going to cut this whole thing off. There's my six and a half. I just go eight and a half. And I'm guessing this is a background piece. Really doesn't have to be perfect, but might as well make it perfect. It's my six and a half by eight and a half. I'm just grabbing, uh, I'm just grabbing fat sixteenths and looking at the chart. This is three by five and a half. Seems like a really big piece of fabric for a three by five and a half, but we'll just go with it. So when you are doing small cuts, cut to your ruler. When you're doing big cuts, cut to your cutting mat. Six and a half by six and a half. I just happen to have a six and a half by six and a half inch ruler. So just so everything is nice and square.
This is my favorite rotating mat. We carry these in the store. It's the Martelli. And I I love my, um, is it Olfa? My other ones. But this is a smoother, it's a smoother turn. I don't know how else to describe it other than that. Okay, so we want a 5x5. Five five. So now I'm doing this cut right here, 5x5, five 3x3.5, five, three three and, and 1.5 by 1.5. So let's do my five by five first. Five by five. Oop. Little piece didn't get cut. Three by three and a half. Let's see, we'll just go. I'm just gonna take this off and then we'll trim it down. Three by three and a half and one and a half by one and a half. Let's go black. We have this one, which is striped and directional. And it wants the stripes to go up and down like this. And I am going to go ahead and uh, do my six and a half by six and a half first. And this is something you might want to line up with your lines. Might as well make it nice and even. Perfect. Six and a half by six and a half. And then we need a two and a half by four and a half. So let's go this way. There is two and a half. I think I can just squeeze it in by four and a half. Two and a half. Oh, you know what? We need we need the fabric to be going up and down, and we need it to go. Oh, I have it that way. Just wanted to make sure the fabric should be this way. Fabric should be up and down for my two and a half by four and a half. The fabric should not be this way. All right. Check that. Two and a half by four and a half. Okay, did I do that right? Fabric should be going side to side. Fabric should be going side to side. So I have two miscuts, but that's fine. I'll just use it for my back. And now, third time is the charm. Hopefully you weren't cutting with me and you were... There we go. <laughs> Hopefully you were going, that's not right. I'm not going to cut what she's doing. All righty. We have this piece right here, which is directional. 
and it is hard to see on my on my chart so I am gonna go ahead and cut that one last I'm gonna cut this one first and then I'm gonna open it up on my computer and just make sure I have it right this is gonna be eight and a half um, eight and a half by eight and a half. Here's my eight and a half by eight and a half. Might as well just cut off this whole top part. And then three and a half by two. So let me snug that all the way down to the bottom. one more cut eight and a half by eight and a half there we go and then this is going to be two by let's cut it call it seven and then we're gonna to have to cut it down a little bit more then we'll cut it down into smaller pieces And then these are going to be three and a half inches each. It is windy out today. Okay, and these are going to be three and a half inches each. I have a little bit of selvage on there, but that's okay. The applique will take care of it or it'll get sewn in. And last but not least, let me check my computer and see which way this goes, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna go up and down like this. All right, so here it is. You want your pattern to go just like this. So how you have it is, uh, because I think it's gonna turn like this when we go to stitch on it. So you wanna hold it that way and we are going to go six and a half by eight and a half i'm going to go my black numbers here because those are my halfers so six and a half by eight and a half and i will do um and like i said this is directional so i am kind of paying attention just to make sure it's not totally off Six and a half by eight and a half. And then go straight up. Six and a half. And now we're ready for the fat eights. Let's go ahead and we're gonna cut the, um, these are the uh, fat eights. So I'm gonna grab those. Here is the red lattice. They might have to move this. We've got a um, two inch by 11 inch. Let's see. I've got so many rulers to choose from. So two inch by 11 inch. And here is, we'll go this way. One, two, and 11 is down here.
two inch by seven and a half. Two inch, oh, there were two of those. Two inch by seven and a half again. And two by three and a half. This fabric next and we've got eight and a half by twelve and a half. Get this ruler right here. We have eight and a half by twelve and a half. That's my whole ruler. Just gonna cut it across. And then I can see these lines better. Make sure I'm going the right way. Eight and a half, twelve and a half. Let me look at my measurements one more time. Eight and a half by twelve and a half. That's right. Oop. Hang on, let me turn it towards it. There we go. All right, there's my eight and a half by twelve and a half. And we also need two by three and a half. Two by, I'm, I'm still, this is going to be tough for me. Two by three and a half. There we go. Two inches by three and a half. Let's get my, you have white with cherries. Let's do that one first. And let's do our two inch by 11 inch. And I'm gonna square that up a little bit. Next, I want um, four by seven and a half, and then I'll cut them down. Four inch by seven and a half. Is that right? Yep. Wasn't seven and a half there, did 
Did I have seven and a half? Nope. Let me cut this end down. And then I'm gonna cut these each to two inches. There we go. And the white hound's tooth. We're gonna cut that down to eight and a half by six and a half. Let's just cut this. There we have our six and a half. And let's go six. And a half by eight and a half. Oh, this is an eight and a half from Truller. So six and a half. Just trim up all my other sides. And we need a five inch by five inch. And last but not least, I need to trim down um, these strips. These are going to be for, uh, and I'm just going to cut them down into um, one and a half inch strips. And then I'll trim them. So I'm going to score this up first, just to make sure that edge is perfect. And then let's go. One and a half by one and a half. I'm going to cut four strips and then we'll trim them down. Okay, if you want 16, if you want 18 and a half, I'm going to cut to my, uh, let's cut to my, to this now. I'm going to cut my end off, my, actually we don't because this side is good. Eighteen and a half. A little extra something, something, something. Where's my eighteen and a half? You could double it up if you wanted, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these. Eighteen and a half, and now we need sixteen and a half.
Okay, so there's my 18 and a half and my 16 and a half, two of each. And for the uh, for the blue, we're gonna have two and a half inch strips. Get out the big one. I'm going to square off this one side and then I'll cut some two and a half inch strips. Make sure that edge is nice and straight. Now I'm going to cut down. I'm going to flip it and just make sure that it's all even. Now I'm just going to cut to my ruler. And we're going to do two and a half inch strips. Let's go black. A little bit of shadowing with this. Mm. I'm gonna see if it's easier with the white side. That is way easier with the white lines. So just be flexible. Sometimes it'll be easier. Okay, we're doing two and a half inch strips. I'm gonna look at that one more time and then we'll cut these down. Okay. And with those two and a half inch strips, we want to cut them down to uh, 22 and a half and 18 and a half. So, I'm going to just take that end off so it's nice and clean. So let's go, first of all, we'll go 18 and a half. Just line up everything. So, looky here, I had that underneath. And you know what? There are many ways to cut. So what I'm doing might not be like how you like to do it. I am an untrained cutter. I just do what makes sense to my brain. We're going to do, I'm going to do my 18 and a half inch cut first. 18 and a half. Let me just make sure I'm looking at that right. Over here, over here on this side, which I am. Okay, 18 and a half. And now we want 22 and a half. And if something happens, you have plenty of extra. You have plenty of extra fabric. Let's 
gonna be 22 and a half. We are done cutting. So now we're gonna go ahead and organize. I'm gonna tidy up just a little bit and let's put everything together. So now that all your pieces are cut, what we're gonna do next is we are going to put Shape Flex on the back of all our background pieces. That's usually what they want you to do. So if you go through here, um, background, Let's just make sure that's what they're going to have you do. If using, so applique blocks, if using fusible backing in addition to the stabilizer, fuse to the wrong side of the background fabric. Note this is optional, but will help reduce puckering. Um, it also reduces shadowing and all of that stuff. So we're going to go through and let's just highlight all our background pieces. Then we're going to pull them. So here's our cherries background. We're gonna grab that one, stripe, stripe, flower background, sweet land background, pieced, pieced block, pieced block, cake. And it's usually gonna be the biggest pieces. Star background. Border flange, pillow back, and we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and pull those pieces first. You're going to need that stripe piece. And it's the one that's six and a half by six and a half. We want our, um, our flower background, which is the hound's tooth, six and a half by eight and a half. Our sweet land, which is going to be... This one right here, eight and a half by eight and a half. The cake, which is eight and a half by 12 and a half. Um, the pie background, which is eight and a half by six and a half. And the piece flag. So that is gonna be, I think this right here. And that's going to be um, Peace Flag, Peace Five Star Background. So let's go ahead and grab this one, six and a half by six and a half. And then the watermelon, which is going to be this one right here. So, and that makes sense. So we should have, uh, do we get the pie? One, the pie, the watermelon. How about the flower? Do we get that? Oh yeah, flower background was the hound's tooth. The cherry. The cake, and that all looks good. So let's go ahead and we are going to, and this is how, and a lot of these are six and a half by six and a half, so I like to lay them all down on a piece of Shape Flex and then cut them all apart. So let's go ahead and grab some Shape Flex and we'll lay that down and then put these on there. All right, so I have some pieces of Shape Flex, and what you want to do is make sure they're not, they don't have threads all over them or something so it gets sandwiched in between. Um, usually it comes off the bolt and it's 20 inches. These were cut down because we were using these for um, another project, and I will take my pieces and kind of lay them down, kind of like, I don't know, not like origami, but I put them in there to fit as many as I can. Instead of cutting these pieces, make sure you have this right side up. I will lay this down like this and then cut it all apart. I should probably do these. It's the same size. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and fuse these down first. That way you're not cutting them and then fusing them you just fuse and then you know exactly where you need to cut so it just makes it easier my iron's heating up i'm gonna have some excess pieces here but that's fine and um these are just in my i have a bag of 
I know this is a lot. Here's a whole bag of Shape Flex pieces. And I don't throw them away. I just kind of use them up. So now you can have a bag of all your Shape Flex. You can have a bag of all your Misty Fuse. And just use it all, ladies. No point in throwing it away. It's all the fusibles usable. How'd you like that? All the fusibles usable. I just made that up on the fly. I'm kind of like M&M. And I don't worry about the edges because after I cut it all apart, then I'll redo it one more time. So that's done. And then I grab my rotary cutter and a ruler. Oop, he got stuck in there. I mean, there's like a sliver in between. Oop. I can wrap it. So much easier. You don't have to look at a ruler and measure and look at your dimensions and then fuse it. Just put it down on your Shape Flex. And I recommend having a bolt of Shape Flex. I go through so much of it. Then you can come back and the edges that weren't totally pressed down. This is the only time I'll use steam sometimes. Well, it's not the only time, but I'll use steam when I'm uh, adhering my Shape Flex. And then you can go ahead and just really press it down. That looks perfect. You can press it down from both sides if you want. And that's ready to go. And you don't have all this excess Shape Flex. You use it all. Depending on the fabric, if it's a dark color, um, if it's light color, I don't usually do this, but if it's a darker color, um, I will even piece together my Shape Flex pieces. If it's light, it'll shadow through where they're coming together. Okay, let's grab our other piece. And remember, bumpy side up. The bumpy side is the fusible side. If it doesn't go all the way to the edge, that's okay too, because um, it's okay because like this piece here, I could totally take a bunch of pieces and fuse them together to use, use with that. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do this piece. Then I'm going to have some leftover pieces. You can also use a, a pressing sheet. I'd rather have this one long.
might have them overlap the tiniest bit. All right, and then you use it all up. And this is dark, so you won't even see it on the back. This is how I do it. But you can do it any way you want. Okay, now that these are all cut apart, now I can come back and really fuse them down. bit of a fuse from this side too. Okay, let's organize. So I'm going to grab some paint. This is how I like to do it. I'm going to grab some painter's tape and uh, a Sharpie. And we're going to go ahead and organize everything now. So I've been creating these spreadsheets for the past couple of projects and what I put on them is um, like an agenda of what we're going to do, the design, what section it's going to be in because this is sewn together in two sections. This right here is section one and this is section two. Um, what page the design is on. So when we uh, flip through our, our um Instructions, you can just easily go to the page, what quilting design you're gonna be using if you're pre-quilting, the final size, your batting requirement, which I'm gonna cut my batting down right now, what hoops you should use, and what pop ruler you're gonna to need to trim it down. So it's kind of all here and you don't have to flip back and forth um, between pages. So I wanna cut all of these batting pieces right now so I can put those, um, I can group those together. So I'm gonna grab, I have this, <laughs> again I keep everything and so I have this huge bag of batting scraps and you know I own a sewing store so we do a lot of projects and we have a lot of leftovers and um, it's kind of nice to just be able to use all of this up so I'm gonna go ahead and cut to these sizes right now um, don't even know what this is from but let's go ahead and cut these and I'm not going to make you watch me cut all of these, but when I'm done cutting them, then we can finally go ahead and put everything together and group everything. So I will be right back after all my batting pieces are cut according to these requirements right here. All right. I think I'm really ready this time. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get our instructions and get everything organized. Here's my little picture for reference, what I need for batting, and we'll just go through the instructions right here. So for Sweet Land of Liberty, we are gonna need your eight and a half by eight and a half piece. Your batting is going to be seven by seven. I'm gonna also lay a ruler down here and that way I can check my sizes as we go. So, there's my main piece. This should be my batting piece, which is seven by seven. And those don't have to cut, be cut perfectly because they get trimmed down. And then you need um, your gold star. So I'm gonna dump out my little pieces here. So I need a um, one and a half by one and a half gold star. two by two. Maybe that's it. Gold star and red cherry and 
Firecracker, Gold Star, and I think that's it. What's my firecracker? So it's going to be a two by two of just the, here we go. So we have this, your star, which is uh, an inch and a half by an inch and a half, then the two by two, and then this two by two. So I'm going to put all of that together. I'm going to write on here. This is how I do it. This is going to be sweet land. I'm just going to take my Sharpie, write that down. Here we go. That's sweet land. And that is done and ready to go. Let's do the next one. So that's sweet land. Next is the pieced block. Or you know what? Let's just go in order of what comes up in your instructions. Pieced flag. Your pieced flag is going to be your short white stripe, which is um, seven and a half by two. And you needed two of those and then you need the short red stripe that's going to be your two cherries here's my ruler i always leave this here so i can measure and make sure so those are my seven and a half by twos then you need your short red stripe which is also going to be your seven and a half by twos Here it is seven and a half, and that is your seven and a half by twos. So this is your white, your red. You need your uh, Lone Star um, piece five, your star background. That's going to be one of your background pieces. This one right here, that's six and a half by six and a half. Then you're gonna need your long white stripe and your long red stripe. So you have this one right here, and we have this one right here. So your long white cherry and your long red lattice. And star one and star two, which are gonna be Your yellow and your hound's tooth. So these two pieces right here, and they're going to be five by fives. So you're going to have that piece, and you're going to have this piece. Um, as far as uh, batting goes, if you look up here, we have our pieced flag. You need a batting piece that's seven by eleven. Here's my seven by eleven, and this one is ready. And this is going to be Peace Flag. Peace Flag is done. Next. We're gonna do our cherry block. Cherry block has uh, the background that is uh, striped and it should have, it's gonna be one of your background pieces that has the shape flex on it. This one right here. And on top of that background, you're gonna have the right cherry, which is, looks like 
one cherry, well, we need the leaf fabric first. Um, right, the leaf is two and a half by two and a half. Here we go. The right cherry is going to be this. And then you're also going to have a piece of the leather. And the leather is also two and a half by two and a half, not that one. We need one a little bit bigger. That's it. I'm going to put it down here so it doesn't get pinched too bad. And then um, as far as our batting, we need the five by five piece. Grab a five by five. That'd be this. And that's it. Cherries. Next one. Um, that's going to be it for this section. Go ahead and go to this section right here. And now we have the cake. So the cake you're going to have, this is our background fabric for the cake. And it's 8.5 by 12. Um, as far as the batting, we need 7 by 11. It's our batting piece. You're going to need your top layer, which is going to be the polka dots. And it looks like the top layer is three and a half by two. Three and a half by two. That's it. Here's your top layer. Your middle layer is going to be four and a half by two and a half. And it is a felt. Four and a half by two and a half. Let me check. Just checking. It is um, this piece and then the felt, which is the top layer, which is three and a half by two. So that's going to be our next piece. The next piece is going to be that striped piece. This one right here, and this one is going to be four and a half by two and a half. That's that piece right there. That actually, and it doesn't say it, but maybe we'll add some shape flex to that because you might see some shadowing. Okay, and then the next piece is going to be the hound's tooth. Hound's tooth is going to be a little bit bigger. So this is your five by three inch. This is the bottom layer. And then you're gonna have the felt. So you're gonna have the antique white felt, five by two and a half. Then you're gonna have the silver. The silver is going to be five by three. That's going to be this one right here. And then you're going to have the small pinwheel that goes on top. And that is going to be two by two. That leather piece right there. And then you're going to have the bigger pinwheel, which is going to be the navy. And that's going to be two and a half by two and a half. And that should be it. So this one here is called cake. Whoop. I don't like to put it into my leather because it'll dent it a little bit. Okay, cake is done. Now we have our flower. Flower background is, what is our flower background? It's so hard to see, huh? Oh, it's the, um, it's the hound's tooth. So here's our flower background. 
For our batting, we need a five by seven piece. I know that's not cut perfectly, but that's totally fine. Stem and leaves is going to be three by two and a half. That would be this one. Petals, that's going to be three and a half. Uh, the petals, let's see. That's my petals, stem and leaf, and then stitch the petals, three and a half by three. That's gonna be this right here. And then we're gonna have the lattice petals, which are also gonna be three and a half by three. The center, which is going to be two by two. And then the pot. The pot is three and a half by three. And that's the whole thing. We'll call this flower. I love being organized and ready to go. So you can just grab each one. Piece block. Your piece block are going to be all those two by three and a half inch pieces. Um, so the first one is going to be, is that the piece one? It's two by three, two by three and a half. But it looks like, let me pull all my two by three and a half. Because it looks like we have, um, maybe is it this one on top? And then we need the hound's tooth. Let me just make sure that's the right fabric. Then we need the polka dot. We need the lattice. We need this one right here. Whoops. Lattice, then comes this. And then comes this. And that should be right. And then uh, you're just going to have that one batting piece. Looks like this. This is going to be pieced block. Pie. Pie is going to be on this. The batting is five by seven. We're going to have silver and it's five by one and a half. Um, navy leather, which is two and a half by one and a half. And then the gingerbread embroidery felt crust, which is five and a half by two and a half. And this is going to be the pie. Block by block quilting. We're going to have, this is the watermelon. So we're going to have this piece. The watermelon is going to be five by seven batting. Uh, you're going to have, what is that? Is that, it's hard to tell what that is. So, Watermelon. If you can't tell, you've got this page right here, which shows you everything. 
So it looks like, oh, the watermelon is the writing and then the flowers. So you're going to have uh, one piece that is the four and a half by two and a half. That's this. Then you're going to have the other piece that is five by one and a half. <gasps> five by one and a half. Oh, no, this is five by one. And there should also be a piece that's going to be five by one and a half. Let me find that. This should be five by one watermelon this is four by two and a half and then you should have a five by one and a half which is the pink pink fabric so right here it's gonna be like that and the rind which is going to be green um it's the green doodle so this is going to be the rind and that should be watermelon This is just how I like to do it. If you want to bag it up, you can bag it up. I just love setting it up like this and having everything all neat and organized and ready to go. Um, the last thing you're going to need is uh, your strips that are going to be for the flange. These are going to be my flange strips. And remember, there was 18 and a half. And uh, there was 18 and a half and there was... Um, 16 and a half. I cut up a whole bunch of these two inch strips. I'm just going to fold them together because you can abut those. They don't have to be a continuous piece. And then you need your, um, were these one and a half by 16 and a half or one and a half by 18 and a half. So these, and these are going to go with the one inch strips. So I cut a whole bunch of these and I'm just, and some of them were super long and some were short. And whatever you have left over is great because you can just use that later. So I have a whole bunch of these. And that is all done. So we are ready to go. You have to have your design loaded on your USB, on your machine. Have this printed out. Have your instructions and then I have everything organized everything is ready to go just like this the only other thing I'm gonna be using is I will use muslin as my uh, batting instead of the no-show mesh but you can use the no-show mesh if you like that and I will see you in a couple of days and we'll get stitching our sweet land of Liberty pillow from Kimberbell Thanks for joining me. Bye.